Good morning, YouTube. I just ran Shelly out because she was using the sink here for her morning get up and I started making this video and I said, hey, the video's on and she disappeared. See her back there now? <laughs> that was epic. Oh, uh, well, anyhow, today I'm working on the tank for the diesel heater. So yesterday I got it sorted out a little bit. It's pretty funny because I'll, sh I'll show you the cue card with the blueprints as they've emanated over time. So I kind of had thought about uh, building this tank before we even left on the last shakedown. But I put it off thinking, oh, maybe I'm trying to do too much. And then we had the same vacuum, it vacuum locked again and... It's just difficult to feel the way that spout is. So anyhow, I got back and uh, told the guys, okay, I've had it, need to build a tank. What do I need to do? So um, I had in my mind that the aluminum would be the most awesome tank, but uh, both of the guys concurred here that uh, the aluminum from the vibration and flexing around can fatigue um, sooner than the steel would. Uh, the difficulty of fabricating the aluminum one is higher and uh, they're both really in favor of a steel tank and for, uh, 16 or 14 gauge steel. So we can easily weld the mounting brackets on the side of it, um, the filler neck. And so that was another thing that I encountered is, okay, I definitely need a vented cap for this. So I was all over on Amazon looking for a vented cap and uh, they're a little bit I guess challenging to find one that would work for the setup that we want couldn't really find the perfect one uh, and then uh, Chris and Joe both said no you just need to go get a uh, transfer tank cap and so at the tractor supply I can buy a the cap a vented cap for a transfer tank and uh, you can also buy it with the two inch uh, bung. So, you know, it's the bung. So then you take a pipe connector, a two inch pipe connector and uh, fabricate one end of it to the tank and then just screw this bung down into it and the cap locks on top of that and it's a done deal. So uh, I'll show you that cap as we progress here and uh, but the cool thing is it's made for a transfer tank so it's made to it has a two-way vent on it so if the tank gets hot and it expands in there it lets air out but when you pull the fluid out of it i believe it said that you could pull it out at 31 gallons per minute uh, it lets air in so that you don't collapse that tank when you're pumping the fuel out into your other tank so I think that solves the problem I'm having with this lid that I have is actually vented, but it's just a cheap little silicone thing and it keeps not working. So I'm gonna put that behind us. I'll show you my blueprint here of what I think we're gonna do. Okay guys, change of plans. Since I came in this morning and they were cutting some 16 gauge like I needed, and there's some pieces that were just a quarter inch short on that dimension. Changed it so that I could use those pieces. Got the first one cut here. We'll see, see how this goes. guys so I got this welded up yesterday got my mounting brackets on it pressure tested it and I had leaks the only, the only leaks I could find were around here so <laughs> I'm so thankful the guys last night I was tired and this last night I came back in to clear this weld off so that I could 
weld it this morning and Joe already ground it off for me. And then Chris came to work and welded it for me before I got into the shop. So I'm like, super awesome. I'm happy to have those guys as my friends. So we're just gonna pressurize it again and test it with soapy water. So it's just like when we used to check gas lines, you just, these seams, you just mist them with the uh -huh. soap and it'll bubble. Okay. But I have to, this is a pretty low tech. So let's do around here first. Okay. Wait. Not up there where the threads are. Where the welds are. Yeah. You need to get this is all bubbly, as it is. Right there. See the big bubble? Oh, it just popped. Are you sure? Right there. Come over to this oh, side. Yep, I can see it. Well, it's in the shade, but I think they can see that. Kind of. Right there. Yeah. So that's how we're finding any leaks. So there's one there. Okay guys, we checked the whole tank and it seems like we just have that one little spot. So Randy's marking it. But we checked all the seams everywhere else and she looks good. Okay guys, I got the tank all painted up. It wasn't without uh few trials and tribulations <laughs> so uh, it was a rudimentary but we didn't put a pressure gauge on here or anything but we could pressurize it and hold this shut and use the soap the only place we had leaks was around here so I'm lucky because Joe and Chris took pity on me and Joe cleaned it up and Chris re welded the rim for me so thanks guys so this is the cap I'm going to put on the tank. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a vented cap. So it's vented for pressure and for vacuum. So that's going to solve my problem with the tank getting collapsed. And uh, this one comes with the bung that will thread right into that pipe fitting so I think this should work pretty slick well, I'm thankful the guys here at the shop put me onto this too they're like oh you need a vented cap I couldn't find one like this on Amazon now that I have it in my hand you can probably search for a transfer tank vented cap with bung and you would find this this was 29 bucks at uh, tractor supply so I'm just going to put some Teflon tape on these threads and screw this in. You can see there it lets, lets it in when it pulls in vacuum and it springs out uh, to let off uh, expansion. So I think it's perfect for the situation I'm in here. So the other thing I would like to do is... It has a lock, you can put a lock on here. So, I just got hand tight. I'd like the lock to be right over there. I'm gonna pull that around just a little bit more. Oh, that might be good right there, because that way, I would know when I went to uh, put the cap on. It has a two-stage thing, so the, the cap goes on there, and then it has a little notch, and then it goes to the final tight. You push it down to get it over to the final tight. Okay, guys, so this is what I don't like about working with pipe fittings. That's how I want it to end up. And I put plenty of Teflon in those threads, but it's not super tight. 
but you always have that, or I always have that, oh, should I take that one more rotation? Okay, I got it where I want it, and what, I don't know, what that was all about is it only engages in one spot. So now the way I've got it clocked on here, I know to put the hole straight up at 12 o'clock and, and like four o'clock is the final spot. And then I could put a little lock in that if I wanted, if I choose to. So, perfecto. Now I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna cut some of this matting and make some little uh, pads so it's not, to isolate it from the body of the bus. Okay guys, I got my little pads made and I pre-drilled them so they'd be easy to stick up there when it's being installed. Okay, YouTube crossing the we're not going back boundary now. <laughs> so that's the little uh, pressure valve that's giving me trouble. It, it looks like the little silicone thing got cocked in there. Anyhow, it's been an ongoing problem and I'm ready for the switch. This one here. Yep, got it on it. Yeah, I've seen this stuff on a lot of stuff online about this uh, that clear fuel line, the rigid fuel line. That stuff doesn't show that it's deteriorating at all. It's really, really good still. So that's awesome. The rubber here shows a little bit of deterioration. I need this rubber connector for back on the tank. All right. Now, being really stubborn on the other end, I'm gonna go run some hot water on it and soften it up a bit. So I don't know if this will help anybody else out, but this is the reason my vent stopped working. This piece, it feels like silicone, but the first time I explored this, it just dropped right in there. So that thing is swollen up. Now it won't just drop right in there anymore. So I think that's the, pro the why this thing, and then this goes down over top of it. So here's the tank all installed. And uh, this is the only way I have to measure the fluid level in it at this point in time. So I've got it marked out for seven gallons. So I just dipped the tank and it's long enough it can't fall in because <laughs> I would drop it in there. Uh, it could be a little messy if you're not careful, but basically when it, when it comes out, you got to get your finger right where the wet spot is. So. Right now, there's a gallon and three quarters in there. It'll hold seven, so we should be able to dump the whole five in. Okay. Let's get it on. Get to dumping. Well, there's two ways to go about it. You can use these cans like this, and it's most unpleasant. You have to click this thing loose, and then you have to hook that onto the spout thingy there. And then you have to plunge that down to fill it. And we can do it that way with this new setup. So see, I let that out and then you have to re-push that. What I don't like about these is if you're not careful, it drips. So what I really want to do is just put this funnel in there and then just pour it in the funnel. YouTube, I think the funnel's much easier. I stop a little bit early and uh, just check it. Dip and stick it again? 
dipstick it again. It's been working great. The only issue I had was after I switched the tank out. I don't know exactly what happened, but I think I got air in the line and it hit a, uh, the air bubbles came out all at once. The uh, burner went out and it put a little bit of fuel into the exhaust pipe and, and it shut off. So it showed a, a fuel, an 08, which is the code for fuel problem. But anyhow, the next morning I started it up and everything worked fine. The other problem as a side note is in high winds, in really high winds, we've been having a problem that will actually blow that out if it's hitting at the side of the bus. So I think I'm going to make a cover like I have for the uh, composting toilet and make it so I can put it on there, but I'm going to make it magnetic so I can change it to the direction the wind's blowing against it maybe. I don't know. but. If you're in super high winds and your diesel heater goes out, it might simply just have been blown out from the pressure. Not a super expert on those, but that's happened twice in really high wind. So luckily we just switched over to the propane fireplace. We got heat. I'm grateful. Hope you guys have lots of love in your life and everything.